Again, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Start Studio Gallery in the backyard, and I want to play, and I have been stuck inside the house all day. And what I want to play with is what I started with yesterday, was to put layers of colors right onto my canvas and puddles and pour them to merge with something next to them. And I didn't use my edge catcher, but that doesn't mean that I won't today, because I'd kind of like to. And I just need to grab one. I'm going to do what I did yesterday, tip it toward the two edges I want to tip it toward, and tip it in what I call the wrong direction. And then I'm going to tip it back again to cover that corner. This is basically in lieu of using my OXO omelet turning spatula. And I'm going to cover the edge this time, which is a little different than yesterday. But it's worth trying makes a nice smooth finish. If I can get it to cover completely, that'll be interesting. This is really paint pouring 101. I'm going to let that go down. I'd kind of like to have an uneven edge. I'd also like to use the paint on the spots that I need it to. That edge catcher may want a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst spatula. I just scrape off the paint and just put it right into the design, right there. Because I can, the name of my book on the Amazon link. <clears throat> below, show more below the video. And I'm not entirely sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this. But I am gonna just keep doing it. What is that? Is that a bubble? I'm going to try and let it fill in, go back down. I may need an edge catcher on both sides. I'll let that fill in around that edge. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and use that edge catcher on both sides so I can make that gold go where I want it to. Sort of just, sort of just pouring over the edge. I don't really want to pour it away. I don't mind the drips intermingling with each other. I don't mind tipping it back in the direction where it's going to cover more of the canvas. I could probably blow or push some of that color where it belongs, or I could just wipe off my spatula, which is something I hate doing, by the way, and you know that. I hate wiping off my spatula. And I like, ooh, there's paint there. I like um, the white and what happens with it, but I think I like this turquoise. Yeah, all right, I'm just gonna give it some white. And I'm not putting it next to the other stripe. Whoops, that was a lot of white. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, I'm learning. I'm gonna grab a clean edge catcher, knock on wood. There aren't many of those, honestly. Um, that's not one. <laughs> Let's just grab anything right now. And I usually go in the wrong direction and I didn't do it this time, but that's okay because we're changing it up. And we can certainly try and pull some of that paint in the other direction. And in theory, I could probably put something in between there. And I might like to do that actually, just because it's an experiment. And if I put a little bit more and a little bit less, then as we tip it, it will become something slightly different. Yeah, and I am pouring it out of the bottle instead of squeezing it out of the bottle. And I'm going to use that edge catcher again in both of those spots. I may be using my, uh, my new basting brush. I don't mind that running down that way. I'm just going to keep pushing it over and letting it run. I think before I get too much further, I'm going to want to go ahead and give myself permission to use some black. Do I want it to be black next, or do I want it to be something more obnoxious? I think we know the answer to that question already. Now, since I can't get that out easily out of that tip, and I have been pouring things, I think that's what I'm going to continue to do. This is an Art Minds iridescent. It's not inexpensive, but it is so worth it <laughs> once you get the nice my recipe, the nice mix of paint, my recipe is underneath the video. 
and we're not heating anything yet. And I may be making a bit more mess than I usually do because paint will run over the edges. And I want like a whole stack of clean edge catchers. Do I have another one over here somewhere? No, I have little tiny other things. But I do have edge catchers. And edge catchers stuck to edge catchers. And let's just go over this way. Because we can, the name of my book on the Amazon link. And expect everything to sort of run together. And go back after I push it that way. Whoops, I just put some fingerprints in. Hey, if you ever get fingerprints in your canvas, you can actually just put a little bit of spray alcohol on the back and leave it in the sun for a minute, and your canvas will come back to where it should in a very short amount of time. I'm going to have to stick a fingerprint in that gold, am I? I don't want to. I am going to... Oh! I'm going to try and get that with my thumbnail instead. And I am willing to make a little bit of a mess this time. And I am going to take what's left of that, uh, what do I call it? I think it's called punch, that iridescent pink. And I'm going to scrape off the gold off of my spatula and wipe it off. And all this is crazy because I'm going to be using that um, basting brush soon enough. Let's just tap that into place over there. I'm not sure what any of this is going to look like. I definitely want it to go all the way that way. Just keep trying to cover the canvas in layers of paint. Let's see, I, I really kind of want some blue, but I also wanted some black. I wanted everything. You know me. I wanted everything. I think the, um, the Prussian blue is good next. I'm going to try and give myself a fair amount of that. And I'm going to do what I said I was doing in the beginning, which is tip it the wrong way first. Whoops. <laughs> I've got some of that. That will cover anything, I'll tell you what. That is some strong colored paint. We may be, I might go so far as to think that I could, um, I could swipe with a spatula. And I have some other colors on there. I'm very tempted to just go ahead and give myself permission to use, yes, those other colors. I'm, I'm doing this because I love what the Prussian Blue does when it's combined with almost anything it sells usually. Not that this would be that method because we're experimenting with this for the first time and there's no, no precedent really to know what's going to happen. What is that? That is a big chunk of something that does not belong. Okay, so now I get to pick a last color and it might be important and I think it needs to be does it need to be? No. I want something spectacular. Of course I do. You know I do. Could be that turquoise again. I'm very much contemplating. I think that's it. Oh, I hate using up my color. That is the, um, the color shift from folk art that I can't seem to replace. I want to just put white down in between everything or gold down in between everything, but these are like you know, those are all separate experiments. Wow, I got a lot of paint on there. And me. Well, some things are just worth getting painty for. And this time, I'm going to spread that out with my spatula so I don't have to worry so much. I am going to take that basting brush to it. But I'm going to get as much off my spatula first as possible. I'm losing my son. Oh well. Hopefully you can still see most of this. Get that thing out of there. It does not belong. You don't know what kind of inspiration is going to strike me. I kind of want to use my chain just because. I'm going to bring that over to the edge and take as much of that paint away as possible because I don't want to waste a drop of it. And I think that's going in the bucket. Wait, i got to clean me i got to at least wipe my hands off, and I've got a nice dry t-shirt around here somewhere. Yes. All right, so I've done a bunch of modifications on my basting brushes, like this, and uh, I took out the residuals. There's only a couple 
in each row. Well, there's four there and four there and two there. I guess I got some more modifications to do there. Here's the one <laughs> that I really want to modify, that I really did modify. And I'm going to use whatever color is on there. cross over these others and then put the residual into a color that I think it will go with. And try and pay a little bit of attention to what I'm doing. And it's entirely possible that I might need to wipe off that basting brush and not know it yet. But I'm not there yet. That's going to my hand. Yeah, it's a simpler I see you thing. Go away. It's a simpler concept than some, maybe. I love that blue. It has got to be one of my favorite things on the planet. That blue is it's too bad I can't find any more of it. Anyway, as long as I have colors from somewhere else, I'm just going to keep playing, see if I can't get some of my paint out of the way. I'm going to call this good pretty quick. Before I completely inundate it, I wonder what would happen if I torch, and I need to find out anyway. Oh, splooge. All right, where there's one, I guess there'll be more. There's quite a bit of paint on there, but I'm liking how it's mixing. And I'm just going to let that relax now. I'm thinking about taking this smaller silicone basting brush. Just doing it a little bit. Oh, that made some beautiful stuff. I could even tip this now. It's got so much paint on it. I don't know what would happen with that. And I really like what I have. So I am going to take this teal. I'm not sure I'll be, whether I'll be sorry about that or not because I don't really want to lose all that. I'm going to be careful not to drip my um, my silicone basting brush into the painting too many places that I don't want it. And I never put my glasses on. What a silly woman. Okay, so let's see what I got. We torch to release the bubbles in the paint. When we heat the paint, the, the air bubbles that are caught expand so we can then remove them. This looks a lot like a fabric design or a scarf to me. We've got some nice cells happening. I've got some places I'm going to need to cover a little bit on my edges with paint, but not many. It's really pretty good. It's too late to tip now based, based on me glopping up the surface. I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead, I want to wipe that off. and not have a wet, ha, ah, where'd my rag go? There it is. Now that I can see it, well, that's still very gloppy. Well, I mean, not gloppy. It's uh, very thin, which is surprising to me. Don't forget you can turn these things sideways and do something entirely different. I love the colors that are mixing. Be careful not to change things too far from where I love them to something different. Sometimes I just want to spatter the stuff that's on my, my tool right on, down onto the painting. You know, like Jackson Pollock would, only not. <laughs> only me instead. And, uh, I think this is done. So I sh should tell you guys while I play with this to finish it. To 
depending on what that entails, that um, if you shop my Amazon link below the video, you'll find the um, OXO omelet turning spatula, which is usually my go-to tool for spreading paint, and the Princeton Artel catalyst spatulas, and I did actually put some uh, basting brushes there, but I'm not sure they're there anymore because somebody just told me they tried to shop there the other day and they couldn't find them. And I am still having too much fun, so I better be careful because sometimes too much fun is too much fun. And that doesn't really sound like me though, does it? Anyway, I think I want, I really want to find out what Shane is going to do. I really, really do. Do I dare? I guess I do. And I don't want all of that white to go away. Chain will often make things sell too. We got no minutes. We got like 59 seconds. But all those colors are so fabulous. Usually I, I give myself a loop in my hand, but I don't think I need that right now. I just want the single strand. Single strand is much less destructive to places that I like that I wished I hadn't destroyed. And I'm really enjoying seeing the patterns released. So what else should I tell you guys? I do sell my artwork and I think I just sold a nice painting today. That'll be a big help. If you want to join this month's contest, uh, it's open to contributors that help keep the studio going through PayPal and Patreon. And those links are on the YouTube channel header and also right underneath Show More. And you can also find Pinterest and PayPal and Instagram links down there. And I'm having way too much fun. I mean, it really could be <laughs> disastrous. Hopefully it won't be. And I'm really, I really wasn't expecting to do chain. But I'm really happy that I did it just because I love chain anyway. It's almost as good as a basting brush. Actually, a basting brush is almost as good as a chain. In any case, that's going in the bucket and we're done with this. And uh, even if it looks kind of like a lot like a piece of fabric, it's okay with me. It's, uh, it's Priscilla Paisley. It's pretty cool. I like the colors. They're not as uh, not as iridescent as some, but it will be tomorrow in the sunlight. Sunlight, I can tell you that now. I'm just going to look for whatever I need to do on my edges, and I'll say this is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida, at Expression to Start Studio. Please give me a thumbs up and watch more videos if you want to help me succeed on YouTube. It helps my placement, so I'm very grateful for that and all your contributions so far and all your wonderful comments. I love you guys, all 65,000 of you. We're coming right up. If it hasn't happened yet, it will be shortly. So you take care. I'll see you soon, hopefully in the next video. I think I'm done. <laughs> I say that optimistically, often. I want to take a fork to it, but I think we're good. And I'm pretty sure we're out of time. And I just really want to um, torch that one more time to make sure all of the bubbles are out but then I see something that I want to fix. <laughs> That's going in the bucket. That way I can't do anything else to it. Someday I'm going to do this on just portions and, and tip it, and that's my next, my next assignment. Hey, hon, could you grab me my phone? A few spirals never hurt anyone.